I am so glad you convinced me that the family car should be the Defender 110. It is so beautiful inside. It's so comfortable. And it just feels indestructible. Yes, it really is. I've been waiting a long time for the new model to come out. The Defender 110, I'm telling you, it's my favorite car of all times. It's my third one. You know, I have stories of going off road. The guy managed the group. He was like, what are you doing in this beautiful car? I'm like, I'm going off road. He's like, are you sure? Because you can use one of ours. And then they look like Mad Max cars. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're going to do this. And he was shocked. Wow. Well, it's great because the Defender has been reimagined for 21st century adventure and its unparalleled off-road ability as well as its robust interior are invaluable whether you're headed towards uncharted territory or just a weekend of exploration. The Defender 110 tackles challenging surroundings with absolute confidence. The SUV conveys strength outside and in, featuring peerless technology like an intuitive driver display and an award-winning infotainment system. That's my favorite part, to keep you connected no matter where the journey takes you. Adventure is unique to everyone, and so is the Defender. Choose from the two-door Defender 90, the four-door Defender 110, or the larger Defender 130 with the ability to seat up to eight passengers. You'll find uncompromising performance in all three. So pack up and go even further with the Defender 110. Learn more at LandRoverUSA.com forward slash Defender. These days, we're all investors. Trying to be smart with our money despite our worst impulses. But at iShares, we believe that deep down inside of every investor is a better investor. One that's just waiting to be let out. Explore iShares ETFs and insights and let your best investor out. Visit iShares.com for more information. Should we have a randomocracy instead of a democracy? And if you don't know what a randomocracy is, it's actually fascinating. I'm, I'm going to leave that as a cliffhanger. I talk with AJ Jacobs again about his upcoming book where he spends a year basically living the life of the constitution. And he's done a deep dive on what every amendment and aspect of the constitution means. He'll describe again, what it means to live the life of the constitution. But one thing he brought up, which was fascinating and we discussed for quite a bit is the notion of a randomocracy. And I'll let AJ describe what that is. At first I thought this was ridiculous, but then it sounded intriguing to me. And I would love to know your opinion. You can tweet out at me at Jay Altucher. Please share this episode, and I'd love to hear as many opinions as possible on whether or not we should have a randomocracy. So enjoy the episode. This isn't your average business podcast, and he's not your average host. This is the James Altucher Show. Now, let me ask you about, I, I'm curious about the constitution and, and well, first of all, one last thing on the puzzle thing, I have an, a puzzle idea for you. Uh, I love doing these on YouTube, which is you play a sound like for one second and someone, it's like, this, it's like there used to be a, a TV show, uh, name that tune. So like right. take Beatles songs and, you know, see, okay, for five seconds, how well someone does three seconds of a song, can they name it? One second of a song. We did this on on this podcast actually. And oh, you did. It, and it was fun. Who yeah. did you play it with? Who did you? Who did? Uh, it? Just Jay, Robin, and me did it. Ah, yeah. Well, yeah. We actually have similar. We have one which named that super villain evil laugh. So we play a laugh, and you have oh, to funny. figure out what evil. We had one where it was named that yeah. So there are all these songs with recognizable yeahs like the Beatles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, that's we funny. Played name. So yeah, I love. And that's one thing that I love, the creativity of doing puzzles in audio form. And that that is one thing that I meant to say this up front. I think of you every day because every day I in my morning routine after I do my puzzles, I spend 15 minutes brainstorming ideas, 98% of which suck and we'll never see the light of day. But I got that from you and uh, and it's and key, it, right? Because A, so key. you have to exercise that idea muscle. If this was the first day you sat down doing it, it would be really hard 
to even come up with ideas. Now you can come up with ideas and it's okay that some are bad, some are good because you you know you're abundant with ideas. Yeah, it has definitely made my life better. Do you still use the waiter pad? I do. Yeah, or I'll use I'll use whatever pad or piece of paper. I don't have as many waiter pads right now, but like if I'm at a hotel, I'll use the pad next to the phone. Like I'll I'll take whatever is around. I do actually find writing it by hand makes the ideas flow more. Yeah. I don't know what it's that is. It's the only is, time I ever handwrite is when I'm writing ideas down. <laughs> well, you know, uh, for my constitution book, I wrote a lot by hand. I mean, I, I have a quill ink. I can get it out now for you. I've like, you know, a goose quill and, and ink. Are and, you only uh, doing, like, if, are you only writing with the quill? Like, you know how when you were living I mean, by the Bible, you only were doing things. Like if you did something that wasn't by the Bible, it wasn't, it wasn't good. Like you, you, you had to stick to the Bible 24 hours a day. So are you only writing with a quill? Well, I am trying to abide by the Constitution 24 hours a day, but there is nothing in the Constitution that says, you know, you have to write with a quill. So there's sort of two parts to the project. One is actually expressing my rights in a originalist way. And then the second part is sort of living as if I were in 1789. So I do do a lot of writing with quill. Sometimes I'll cheat and write with quill, take a picture, and then text it to someone. So I sort of like <laughs> combine the two. Uh, but let me ask you a question. What's, what do you think is the hardest? What do you think is one thing people don't truly understand about the Constitution? Well, I will say this. Uh, I will get yelled at very, very loudly and angrily by my publisher if I talk too much about it. But um, let me just give you one, and then uh, that'll be a teaser on a right. bouche for when I come back. Well, one thing is, I think you have on, on one side, uh, you have people saying the Constitution is... Uh, you know, it's perfect, it's flawless, it was, uh, you know, written by these gods. And then on the other side, you have people who say that it is just, you know, it, it is a terrible document, that it was um, designed to keep oppression and, uh, and other horrible things happening. And I think both are true. I think it, it can be both at the same time. That there is a strain in the Constitution that is wonderful and democratic and about the common good. There is also a strain in the Constitution that is about making sure the elite stay the elite. So it is almost like Schrodinger's cat there. You know, it is two things at once. So the key is to focus on the good part and try to... Um, fulfill that, the democratic part of the Constitution, as opposed to the other part. But do you think, though, the elitist part has been trending over the centuries towards non-elitist? So, for instance, the idea that initially the Senate, a senator was elected by their legislature as opposed to the population of the state. Now, of course, there was that change. There was an amendment to change that, and senators are elected by the people, not just the, the, the elite in the legislature. I would say that is the big story that the we the people initially meant we the white, wealthy, educated people. And we have been, the, the fight over the centuries has been to try to expand that to women, to black people, to people who are 18. The, the voting age used to be 21. Uh, so that has been a long fight and, uh, you know, it, it continues. Um, but there are, uh, yeah, there are elements, uh, it, it's it's a complicated document. I, I feel that when I did the Bible, people would say, oh, the Bible says this, the Bible says that. Uh, and I'm like, well, parts of the Bible say that and parts of the Bible don't. The Bible is complicated. And I feel the same way about the Constitution. And, you know, I know I know you can't, I'll just ask one more thing because <laughs> okay. we'll, we'll definitely do a deep dive on the Constitution <laughs> later. But what was the pamphlet about that, that you wrote in order to, and handed out in order to demonstrate free speech? Well, that one, I was, um, I decided that Twitter, I think a lot of the founding fathers would be horrified by social media um, because it's so fast. They wanted ways to slow down our thinking as opposed to speed it up. So I decided instead of tweeting something or Xing whatever it is now, I would I would write it with my quill pen on parchment paper and hand it out in Times Square. So I did, and I did I did tweets on. So they were mini pamphlets, is what I called them. Uh -huh. So I did one about. Um, I said like, 
uh, among all types of voting methods, ranked choice voting is my number one favorite. There's something like that. All right. Uh, uh, and and I did a couple of others. Uh, and it was, I will say, it was interesting to lock eyes with people as you were handing them out. As you were tweeting, uh, something that never as happened. As I was tweeting, <laughs> yeah. And I couldn't, like, say, you know, something incredibly... Um, horrible about you know you're you're an idiot you're whatever uh because i was looking these people in the eyes oh my gosh i love these clothes mizzen and main that's m-i-z-z-e-n and main it really is the most comfortable work clothes travel clothes i'm trying i I had to travel this whole week. I'm traveling for a week and a half, and I just took Mizzen and Main clothes with me. Close out 2023 in style with comfortable, breathable, packable, and machine washable pieces from Mizzen and Main. As you wrap up your year end goals, enjoy a Mizzen and Main dress shirt that you can wear confidently. I like that they've very, very just nice, solid colors. I don't really like to get all fancy in patterns and everything. Although they do have some pattern shirts, but very comfortable clothes, stretchable pants. It's just super comfortable, but they look professional and they, you can wear them casually or professionally. I like some of their flannel shirts or untuck shirts. I love untuck. I never tuck in. So again, uh, whether you're shopping for a special someone or giving yourself the gift you really want, I just buy myself gifts. <laughs> Mizzen and Maine is the perfect gift for any guy who works, travels, and or cares about looking and feeling great. As you could tell by my many photos across the internet, I care about looking fantastic. I'm practically a model. And let's be honest, every guy loves to look great. So again, shop now at MizzenandMaine.com and save 20% when you spend $130 or more using promo code James, that's promo code James at Mizzen and Main, M I Z Z E N and Main.com. You know what I love about fantasy sports is that even though I'm not going to be a great basketball player or a baseball player or a football player or whatever, I feel like. I get to participate and make decisions and use my knowledge of these different leagues to, or these different sports to, to compete. So it's like, I can pick my team or I can pick my favorite players and I could use my knowledge to make predictions and maybe even make money. So with the basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the specials league on prize picks. This is a league created specifically for combo projections that include two or more players from different sports or leagues. Want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Schultz, who's also been a guest on this podcast and I've been a guest on his? You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries for some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each week. Look, Prize Picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. What? So I love playing it. I love anywhere where I can use analytical ability with my interests to demonstrate some skill and maybe make some money. And I like the game like aspect. I do wish they had chess as a category on prizepicks.com, but I'll sign up for what they've got. Maybe I should make my own fantasy chess league. But in any case, I love prize picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash James. Use code James for a first deposit match up to $100. That's the easiest $100 you're ever going to make. So that's prizepicks.com slash James and use code James. Daily fantasy sports made easy. There's a reason why it's like the most important amendment of the constitution, this idea that you can't punish somebody for what they say. And the reason they have to put that in there is because people were punishing people 
for what they said, particularly in other societies. So I wonder if maybe this is the only con- type of question I have, you know, that I, where I'm pushing at you, but like maybe you need to hand out something where most people are not going to agree with you and, and yet you have this right to free speech. Well, I will say, yes, the, the idea of disagreeing with someone um, is great and that is totally American. But I was actually just reading the Federalist Papers and uh, Hamilton wrote something that I loved and I'm going to botch the quote exactly, but it said something like, no one was ever converted to a religion truly by uh, iron and, uh, and violence. Uh, I'll get the exact quote. But his idea was, if you want to change someone's mind, do not go in attacking them. Uh, it's all about listening and making reasonable arguments and and being thoughtful and seeing the world from different lenses. So that, there was a lot that I think the founding fathers got wrong, obviously slavery mm-hmm. and uh, but there were uh, but there were some things that they were very wise about, and that is one of them. Like it's all about uh, trying to have a reasonable civil debate. But like, I wonder if you read, wrote a pamphlet which was reasonable and civil, but it was about a, m- a more controversial topic. And obviously, there's a whole spectrum of controversial out there. But let's just say you wrote a pamphlet that said nobody should. It, it is it is useless to vote, and because this is co- related to the Constitution, and uh, uh, voting is part of part of the con- is of course part of the constitutional <laughs> no, you make process. That argument, right? So, but but uh, you can make an argument to not vote because, like, oh, you're one vote among whatever. I mean, there's arguments on both sides, and then it's interesting because because the thing is, everybody says you have to vote if you want to have a, a voice. But my whole thinking is the Constitution says I have a right to vote but I don't have to vote. I also have a right not to vote. Well, I will say two things. One, uh, I think the best things that I, the things I like to read, and which is why we did good or bad, it's all about nuances. So it's Mm. not, I don't think you would ever actually say voting is useless. You would say there are pros and cons to voting. Here is why I maybe choose not to in this particular case. And that is reasonable. That is something that I will listen to. But if someone says a black and white thing, uh, th- I'm going to tune it out. So I like nuance. I like... Yeah, um, that's interesting. Uh, you do like nuance. Uh, that's your books. Sec- your books are about nuance. I love a nuance. I love a nuance. And here's the second thing that I'll just mention is that you might be interested. Uh, I have a little section on this in the book and then I can't talk about it anymore. But there are people some very smart people who want to abolish voting. And you think, really? well, that is the craziest, least democratic. That's the definition of tyranny. How but would you no, elect they, anybody? Well, there you go. Their argument is a randomocracy. It's like the jury pool. You choose your governor, your senator, your mayor randomly. So you have to pass a certain civil test. So... You have to, like, you know, you get a, a, a few thousand people who pass the test that they know enough, that they're reasonable. Uh, and then once it goes there, it becomes random. It's a lottery. And the idea is what Adam Grant, who I'm sure you've had on the show. Oh, yeah, many times. He wrote about this in the New York Times, and he endorses it. There's a Yale political science professor who endorses it. It's been tried a tiny bit in Iceland and France in very small ways, but it's a very interesting idea because... It's not a, It's not the worst idea I've ever heard. <laughs> no, it is not. the One thing, one argument for it is that the studies show the people who are attracted to politics have the dark triad. They are narcissistic, sociopathic, and uh, I forget the other one, but Machiavellian. So... They are not, that is who is attracted to running. But if you do it as a randomocracy, you're going to get people who are much lower on that scale, perhaps. So it is an interesting idea. It's dangerous. I don't really, I don't want it to become a randomocracy tomorrow, but. I mean, the danger is, is that then 
the lifelong government workers would get a lot more power. Well, one solution, and I don't want to get into too much detail, but one solution is you get a lifelong pension. You're So you are the senator or your congressman for, for five years, and then that's it. You're not allowed to work anymore because you, otherwise you would have to, you could be corrupted uh, uh. while you're in office. So it's almost like, you're sacrificing. You're doing this one thing. That's it. You get a lifelong pension, a life of leisure afterwards, and that's and that's your duty to country. And that that that's very interesting. But what what I was saying though is, let's say you get the job as Secretary of State, <laughs> like, oh, let's. I guess that's not an elected position. So that you would if you would still have to appoint someone. Like, let's say I randomly was picked to be president. You'd still have to appoint someone to be Secretary of State. Well, you could make that random too. You could get rid of appointments too, which may be a good idea. But at some point you need a layer of people who actually know what to do. (laughs) Well, that, exactly. That's a big counter argument, like expertise. Is this a terrible idea? And and people who are, the name of it is sortition. That's the fancy name, but I just call it randomocracy. I love that. The randomocracy people say that actually having a lower level of expertise is not bad because they're more humble and they will ask actual experts and listen to them uh, when they make decisions. Ah, maybe if that's, that's formalized, true. like there are councils of expertise out there right. that help the random people. And, and, and that has to change a lot too so that nobody, no one person in those councils could get too much power or influence. Right. I mean, it's a re- uh, the I interesting. Love this. I might, I might have to switch my beliefs. Switch to, this. to a sortition. <laughs> I love. But one thing I did love that this Yale professor said was, you know, we are still basically using ideas from the 18th century. You know, these these 18th century people came up with some radical new ideas about representation and balance of powers, and we're we're 300, 250 years later, we're still coasting on those. So maybe. It's time. It makes sense for the Senate and Congress because in general, particularly Congress, like in general, the average Congress person does not have a lot of expertise before they enter Congress. They're That's just supposed true. to vote based on the beliefs, ideally, of their constituency, their, their their district. But I guess like for things like foreign policy, it's useful to have a long-term, the, the yes. idea is it's useful to have a long-term congressman, but maybe it's not. Like who's to say? <laughs> Well, I would be terrified if this actually came to pass. I mean, I think it'd be interesting to start like in a tiny, tiny way, like one council person from a town in North Dakota is selected by lottery. Then we see what happens. But, you know, this is not something I want to see ever in the next year. Like maybe in 100 years when we've worked out the kinks, it'd be good to... uh, But you you know what it reminds me of, though? Have you ever seen the Isaac Asimov story franchise no. What's the idea? So, okay. Basically with polling today, obviously, you know, you don't have to poll everybody in the United States to know who's the likely winner for presidency. You know, you, you have to poll enough people to be statistically significant. So maybe a few uh-huh. thousand people in every state, like to know how each state's going to go. And then you figure out the electoral college. So they, they get, they get polling. They master the art of polling so well that instead mm. of a few thousand people, then it became like just you just need a few hundred people to be statistically significant. And then you just need <laughs> a dozen people. And then they figured out that you just need one person. And the and the computer, like they this is the beginning of mainframe computers. So that they, they have this multi, this multi-vac computer uh figures out who is the average person in the US. And <laughs> That person <laughs> picks the president. Like that, you only need That's one hilarious. vote to pick the president. That's a great idea. It kind of reminds me of the Nielsen's, which I think are have lost some power, but it was just crazy how much power these, I don't remember, few thousand people had over what millions of people saw on television. And, uh, and my friend Joel Stein, who you might have had on the show, who's hilarious, he once pitched a sitcom to one of the networks called The Nielsen's, and it would be about a Nielsen family. And his theory was everyone who's a Nielsen family would watch 
the Nielsen's to see what it was like. So we would get a hundred rating, a hundred share. Everyone. Oh my God. Was a Nielsen. That is a brilliant idea. That is like. That's kind of like very life hackish. <laughs> like, it is very life hackish. Yeah, like it's a guarantee it. to have the fewest possible viewers, but still get like <laughs> the highest Nielsen ratings. <laughs> it's true. You know what else I love about Nielsen's is that the moon landing only got a ninety-three share, meaning there were seven percent of people in the world or in the United States who were like, "Yeah, let's see what else is on." Right. Oh, I'm so bored of this already. <laughs> Like, I do, I put honestly, it back to Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. I honestly think it was the Three Stooges is my memory. I could be totally fabricating that, but I, I have a, a vague memory that that was the counter-programming. So, yeah. That, that is just fascinating. Shows you can never please everyone. That's, that is whenever I think about, oh, this guy, you know, said he hated the show or whatever. I'm like, you know what? Moon landing got 93 share. You can never please everyone. That is fascinating. Well, AJ, puzzles, constitution, writing, as usual, I can't wait to the next time you're on the podcast. Please, when you finish this book, can you come on a little more regularly? Like, okay, we'll do good or bad, but I want more puzzles. I want more constitution. I love this stuff. Are you kidding? Yeah, just give me one month and then I'm done because it has to close soon. They want it out very soon before the election. And then I'm yours and that, and you come on mine. Oh yeah, definitely. And in order for it to get out, like people don't realize, like you finish, like right now we're 13 months to the election, but you basically have to finish the book. Then it goes through six months of editorial. Then it's got to be designed and interior designed and they have to send it out to all the bookstores. And it takes 13 months from finishing for your book it's to a, come out. It's a super slow process still. Uh, and yeah, I don't know whether that's good or bad, but but I have to, yeah, I have to finish it and uh, by by early November or, and... Did we ever do a good or bad <laughs> about using doing self-publishing versus traditional publishing? No, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I, I know very little about self-publishing, we'll, but we'll, I'd we'll, love to. we'll do that. The, the good thing about an A.J. Jacobs book, though, being traditionally published is that it's in all the airport bookstores. Your books, I do love you that. and Tucker Max and Malcolm Gladwell <laughs> and John Grisham are reliably in all the airport bookstores. <laughs> well, bless you for saying so. I do love seeing him there. Thank well, you, James. Thank that you so was much, AJ. So Appreciate fun it. as always. Loved it. Is it possible to predict the unpredictable? Can 3D printed life-size organ models help to map out complex surgeries ahead of time? Is it possible? It already is right here. Mayo Clinic, you know where to go. Entresto, Sucubitril Valsartan Tablets is the number one heart failure brand prescribed by cardiologists and has helped over 1 million people with heart failure. It's a prescription medicine that treats adults with long-lasting chronic heart failure and works better when the heart cannot pump a normal amount of blood to the body. Don't take Entresto if pregnant. It can cause harm or death to an unborn baby. Don't take Entresto with an ACE inhibitor or Aliskiran. Or if you've had angioedema with an ACE or ARB. Don't take with Aliskiran or within 36 hours of taking an ACE inhibitor. The most serious side effects are angioedema, low blood pressure, kidney problems, or high blood potassium. Angioedema is swelling of your face, lips, tongue, and throat that may cause death. If it causes difficulty breathing, get emergency help. Ask your doctor about Entresto. To learn more, visit support.entresto.com or call 833-446-6699. For pricing, visit entresto.com backslash cost. If you can't afford your medication, Novartis may be able to help.